This video introduces the dot product of vectors. Suppose I have these two vectors, a and b, each with three components. I find the dot product, which is written a dot b, I usually write it with a little circle to make the dot more obvious. To compute that, we multiply corresponding entries and add them up. So here we do 2 times 5 plus negative 1 times 1 plus 3 times 2, and that adds up to 15. In general, to take the dot product of two vectors, each one with n entries, we again multiply corresponding entries and add them up. So here v dot w would be v1 w1 plus v2 times w2 plus all the way through vn times wn. Here are some properties of dot product. Let's suppose that u, v, and w are vectors, all of the same dimension. By the same dimension, I just mean the same number of elements. And let's suppose that c is a scalar. If we dot, take the dot product u dot v, that's the same thing as doing v dot u. In other words, dot product is commutative. Dot product is also distributive over addition. If I take dot, u dot v plus w, that's the same thing as doing u dot v and adding u dot w. And it's distributed in the other direction too. If I take v plus w and dot it with u, that's the same thing as v dot u plus w dot u. If I do scalar multiplication together with dot product, I can move that scalar around any way I want. I can rewrite this as u dot c times v, or I can do u dot v first and then multiply that by c. All of those give me the same thing. All of these first three properties can be proved by just writing out dot product in terms of the entries and using the commutative, distributive, and associative properties of regular arithmetic. For example, if we want to prove that u dot v is the same thing as v dot u, if we just write out the entries of a general vector u with n entries and the entries of a general vector v with n entries, we write out u dot v, then that string of arithmetic is the same thing as if we switch the orders of the v's entries and the u's entries. which is the same thing as v dot u. And these other properties can be proved similarly. Finally, last property, if I take u and dot it with itself, then I could get a lot of different numbers, but I'm always going to get a number that's positive or zero. u dot u is always greater than or equal to zero. That's because u dot u can be written in terms of its entries as u1 times u1 plus u2 times u2, keep adding up the entry times itself, un times un. In other words, it's the sum of a bunch of squares. And squares are always positive numbers or zero. So therefore, this quantity has to be greater than or equal to zero. In fact, u dot u is only going to be equal to zero, it's going to be equal to zero if and only if, the u1, u2, and un are all zero. If even one of them is positive or negative, not zero, when you square it, it'll be a positive number. You'll get something strictly positive. So u dot u is zero. If and only if all of these entries are zero, i.e. u is the zero vector. The property that u dot u is always greater than or equal to zero and that it's equal to zero if and only if u is the zero vector is called the positive definite property. And that concludes this brief introduction to dot product.